Do you recognize these four men in this picture? Okay, we will help you. The fat one on the right is Percy Chapman, former overseer of the Canadian branch of Jehovah's Witnesses. The second on the right is Nathan Knorr, who was the president of the Watchtower Society from 1942 until 1977. The next in the middle is William Howe, who served as legal representative to the Watchtower Society in high-profile cases, including in the Canadian Supreme Court. But the last one on the left is the Scottish-born Leo Kincaid Greenlees, who was the secretary-treasurer to the Canadian branch, but by 1964 was assigned to the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses in Brooklyn becoming automatically a member of the governing body since 1971 until 1984. However, what do these men have in common? Well, all of them were Freemasons. And all of them played significant roles in defending the Masonic interests inside Jehovah's Witnesses organization. However, there's something more in common between some of them. For example, Percy Chapman and Leo Greenlees were assumed homosexuals. And while they served in the British and Canadian branch they had a romantic relationship. Percy Chapman's homosexuality was later on exposed, and instead of being DIS fellowshipped, Nathan Knorr, who handled the case himself, demoted Chapman from branch overseer into a janitor with the condition that he would find a single sister for himself and get married. However, Chapman was totally anti-marriage, giving himself the instructions that New Bethel boys would never contemplate marriage. As a result of those radical views and conduct, Nathan Knorr gave specific orders that Chapman should be DIS fellowshipped, and it happened. One interesting detail regarding Chapman and Greenlee's homosexuality is that the Canadian branch at that time was located in Irwin Avenue, exactly at the center of the Toronto Gay District. And the Kingdom Hall in which they used to attend the Bible sermons was above the Parkside, one of the most popular gay bars of Toronto, during the 50s and 60s. Coincidence? Or a clarifying detail? But, what about the Scotsman Leo Greenlees? Leo Greenlees managed somehow to escape from Disfalo shipping, and was later invited to work in a high position in the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses in Brooklyn, New York. Despite his homosexuality being widely known, not only in Bethel and in the surrounding congregations, Greenlees had the sponsorship and protection of the Grand Lodge of England, who recommended him as a member of the newly formed governing body by the year of 1971. However, in 1984 several accusations of child sex abuse had been raised against Greenlees, and in one of them the father of the abused child threatened the governing body of reporting the case to the police, which would be a huge scandal and that resulted in him being removed and sent away to other part of the country. Greenlees died in 1988 of a stroke and was buried in the small town of Modesto, California. But, for what reason the Freemasons infiltrated homosexuals inside Jehovah's Witnesses' governing body? Well, the New World Order has an agenda of reducing the world population. They believe that if they replace the traditional family, male and female, who produce children, by an alternative family, man plus man and woman plus woman, who cannot procreate, the number of births will be diminished, shrinking this way the world population. To implement this plan they need the support of the churches who in their majority already approve the gay marriage, and accept homosexuals as their leaders. The Jehovah's Witnesses are the only Christian religion who rejects the gay marriage. In observation of the Bible principles. But let's now talk about another pedophile inside the governing body, Theodore Jerakes. 
Theodore Jarakes became member of the governing body in 1974. Due to the expansion which Nathan Knorr understood to be necessary, in order to restore his power and the influence lost in 1971. Until that moment Theodore Jarakes had been already involved, at least, in two cases of child sex abuse. According to Barbara Anderson, former writer and researcher to the Watchtower Society, Jarakes was removed from the post of overseer of the Australian branch for child molestation. A few years later, in Los Angeles, California, he had molested a five-years-old child named Pat Garza. Later on, the victim came public with her statement, and the service department ordered the elders of her congregation to treat Miss Garza as DIS fellowship. Despite that no such announcement had been given, but why such evil conduct have been tolerated inside the highest body of an organization which claims to adhere strictly to the Bible principles? Theodore Jarakes was a Freemason, and had been entitled to implement the Freemason's agenda inside Jehovah's Witnesses' organization. On the other hand, he had been given the duty of expanding the Anglo-Saxonic Freemasonry to the Eastern European countries, even in the time in which they were under the communism rule. By that time Vladimir Putin, who's now the president of Russian Federation, was already in the counterintelligence service, with the duty of watching foreigners who were traveling around the communist countries. And it is obvious that he paid a special attention to the activities ran by Jarakes, and understood that his presence in Russia and in other countries of the Eastern Bloc were a threat to the national security. On the other hand, Putin had an additional concern over Jarakes and other members of the governing body. Please pay attention to the following video recorded right before the Winter Olympics in Sochi. With less than a month to go before the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russian President Vladimir Putin clarifies his stance on gay visitors to the Games. Here, speaking to Olympic volunteers. We aren't banning anything. We aren't rounding up anyone. We have no criminal punishment for such relations, unlike many other countries. So one can feel relaxed and at ease. But please, leave the children in peace. Putin on Friday referring to a law signed last June banning so-called gay propaganda to minors. But is not only the personal conduct of individual members of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses which cause concern to the Russian government. The other issue was the raise of power which Theodore Jarakes, a Freemason, gained inside the religion. After the death of Frederick Franz, Jarakes took almost full control of the governing body. Barbara Anderson, Indiana, one of her interviews had mentioned that many in there call him the boss. Despite Frederick Franz had been replaced by Milton Henschel as the president of the Watchtower Society. The person who held the power was Theodore Jarakes. Becoming him the one who had the last word on most of the decisions, mostly in what concerns the admission of new members of the governing body. Jarakes just handpicked hardliners like him from the Masonic Lodge. That might explain why some of the actual members, such Mark Stephen Lett, who is a master mason, known as the Lord of the Rings keeps lying to the public, when he denies the existence of child sex abuse inside their organization, when at the very same time David Splain, another member of the governing body has admitted to the press that the society spent hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation and court settlements. Contradiction, or damage control. However, not everything was roses to Theodore Jarakes. Despite most the governing body being formed by Freemasons, Jarakes had the opposition of some of its members. For example, the highly educated Lloyd Barry was against the transformations which Jarakes wanted to do to the organization. Other members who never sided with Jarakes' ideas was Daniel Sidlick, who refused to attend parties if he knew that Jarakes was supposed to be present. 
Between the mid-90s and early 2000s the governing body was a powder keg of internal divisions. That might explains why certain violent arguments happened in governing body meetings, as described by former Bethelites, such as Howard Rutledge and others. However, the biggest setback to Jarek's always was Lloyd Barry. Many people do not know, but was Barry who removed Jarek's from his post as overseer of the Australian branch. On the other hand, Barry had projects in Brooklyn Bethel which aimed to help individual witnesses to a better understanding of the Bible. By going deeper and deeper on the real meaning of the wording and terminology written in the biblical original languages. Such program was a threat for the power of certain members of the governing body, once they couldn't implement their Freemasonic agenda. Due to the strict adherence to the Bible principles dictated by a deep study of the Bible in the original languages. Because such program was under Barry's supervision, Theodore Jarekes needed to get rid of him. In the summer of 1999, Lloyd Barry was murdered, when he collapsed on the stage, after a poisoned cup of tea being served to him. This was the turning point to the Jehovah's Witnesses organization, and a highway for Jarek's ambitions. Since then he took full control of all departments in the organization. Other members such as Jack Barr and Daniel Sidlick were not strong enough to stand up to him, and gradually the older members of the governing body were replaced by others, who were Jarek's men. Was also by that time, Elders of individual congregations started to be invited to become Freemasons. It also happened that by such time the congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in Russian language. In countries such the USA, United Kingdom and Germany started to grow quickly, which means that more Russian elders were appointed and invited to become Freemasons. Those elders consequently started to invite other elders from their mother Russia to become Freemasons. Vladimir Putin started to look at that scenario with serious concerns, and decided to implement a law against extremism in order to suppress Jehovah's Witnesses' activities, and strike down the Western Freemasonic influence in Russia. The Freemasons never were in good standing in Russia. Since the times of the Great Tsarina the Freemasons had been persecuted, jailed and banned, forcing some of their best intellectuals into exile. This story was repeated several times through history, and even when the Grand Lodge of Russia was solidly established. There was always internal divisions and suspicious of espionage for other countries. Today the scenario is not different, and despite many inside Vladimir Putin's inner circle being Freemasons, their influence is not significant. A good example of this, is that Andrei Bogdanov, the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Russia was a presidential candidate to the elections ran by the year of 2007, but only had 1.3% of the votes which is a clear demonstration of how irrelevant is the influence of the Freemasons in Russian politics. While the politics in the West are dominated and manipulated by the Freemasons, in Russia is the other way around, is the Freemasons Lodge who is controlled by the politicians in power and their inner circle. Once the Russian government is fully aware that the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses their elders in each congregation, and other members are under control of the Western Freemasonry. Vladimir Putin found a good reason to ban their activities once he feel it might be a threat for the security and stability of his country. Can you imagine if the leadership of Jehovah's Witnesses had fulfilled their own principles in maintaining themselves neutral of any political or religious affiliation? how much suffering and pain they could avoid to their Russian brothers and sisters. This means that the ban on Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia, and all the consequent mistreatments, is caused by their own leaders violating the Bible principle of neutrality.